So guys, we're halfway through October and I just realized that I did not create a high growth stock video. What's wrong with me? Sorry about that guys, hope you forgive me, but better late than never, right? And if you still appreciate the effort, you know, two weeks late, I know, consider smashing that like button down below, you know, we're a bit late with the YouTube algorithm, but let's try to get this video out there if possible. But anyways, the stocks that I'm gonna be discussing today are stocks that you guys have been wanting me to talk about for a little while, so I thought what better way than just throwing them in this video and just having a discussion on them. Now, I don't really know if I'll actually be buying these stocks in October, but they are on my watch list, and if they do show some better valuations, there's a dip in the market, you know, the stocks crash, bad earnings, who knows what comes out, I would be interested in buying these stocks. However, at today's valuations, they are expensive, you gotta admit that, you gotta accept that, but we are going to discuss them in a bit of detail here today. But anyways, enough jibber jabber, let's get rolling with pick number one. So everyone's favorite music streaming platform, Spotify, is the first stock we're discussing today because, well, quite honestly, it's an incredible growth stock. Spotify has had a phenomenal year, up 75%, and if you're buying into the stock today, that's just something right off the bat that you have to accept. Sometimes you just have to pay a premium for a great stock or a great service, which kind of segues me into today's video sponsor. So Skillshare is our sponsor today and I want to just give them a huge thanks for supporting the channel. If you haven't heard of them before, Skillshare is a platform where you can learn a new skill that can help improve your lifestyle. Whether you want to learn how to build a website or learn how to play a new musical instrument, Skillshare has the right course for you. Now I browsed through their catalog and found that something that would help me personally is improving my filmmaking skills because, well, that will help me create better quality YouTube videos. So I decided to take the filmmaking from home, turn your footage into compelling video course by Penny Lane, and so far I'm enjoying the content in there. I find the material well laid out, I find the platform very intuitive, and I find the value of learning a new skill, at least in my mind, is something that pays for itself. Now as a special offer to my subscribers, Skillshare says that the first 1,000 people to click on the link down below in the description will be able to get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's only about $10 per month. But anyways, guys, they're supporting the channel, so I'd appreciate it if you could just check them out in the description down below, and also let me know in the comment section down below what skill you've decided to learn. But anyways, getting back into Spotify here, this company is growing rapidly and the revenues this year expect to grow by nearly 40% and next year around 22.5%, bringing them just under $11.5 billion in revenue. And while today Spotify is a $50 billion market cap company, so it isn't very cheap, but if they are able to hit $11.5 billion in revenue next year, we could be onto something. Calculating the price of sales for 2021 based on the estimates, it gives us around a 4.35 price to sales, and this is a value that I personally would seriously consider buying Spotify at. But before I can really make that decision, there are a few more metrics we need to look at. So while revenue has been growing rapidly, the company still struggles to pull in a profit. They have reduced their losses from 2018 quite significantly in fact, but they have yet to taste profitability which is possibly a reason the stock trades at a lower price to sales. Investors these days love growth companies so Spotify wins here, but there's a double bonus for profitable ones as well and until Spotify can show that they can hit and maintain profitability, it may be a stock that trades at these lower price of sales valuations. Now one thing that I like to do to look at a high growth business to see how they're doing, you know, how quickly can they really get to profitability and sustain it, is to look at their gross margins. Unfortunately here, we can see that they're holding around a 25.5% gross margin, which is uh, not too bad, but it's much lower than I expected for a pure software business. Honestly, this took me by surprise because I was expecting gross margins of over 80% just because of the nature of the business and it being a software company. So looking at 25%, uh, I feel that's kind of on the lower side here for a software business and that may be why it justifies a lower valuation today. That being said, they are pulling in positive free cash flow, much less this year, but generally nearly half a billion dollars and that is growing which tells me the 25% margin may actually end up being enough to sustain 
gain good profits in the future. On top of this, they've also been issuing more shares and diluting shareholders, which helps them strengthen their balance sheet, but at the same time, doesn't give investors as much confidence in the way that management is managing their money. Now I know you can look at this either way. Spotify is a growth company, so they need the money to keep growing. But at the same time, they are growing rapidly and they are growing their revenues rapidly with pretty decent gross margins. So they should be able to sustain the business without having to constantly raise new capital. Anyways, this got me thinking, if they're raising cash consistently, I need to really look at their balance sheet to make sure that they're not in a pickle here. In terms of their assets, the company has just over $6 billion currently, which is a healthy amount of assets with around $2 billion of that sitting in cash. Total liabilities, on the other hand, sits at $3.75 billion, with $673 million sitting in long-term debt. But even so, they have enough assets to cover their liabilities with around 1.6 times assets to liabilities. So I'd say this balance sheet is good, not bulletproof, but it is good. No fears really of this company going bankrupt or insolvency or anything like that. However, as they keep growing, it seems like they're spending a lot more, so that cash balance could start shrinking over time. You gotta keep an eye on that. So really, Spotify Spotify, great business. I'm personally a customer, been a customer for a while on Spotify. Love the service. It pretty much has every song you could ever think of. And because it is a subscription model, the company has constant recurring revenue, which is again, what investors currently are looking for in the market. Are you still watching? If you are, let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite song of all time is. Our second stock here, Peloton, is on a whole nother level. And I know you guys have been asking for a while to cover this stock, so here you go. Growth this year is expected to be nearly 100%, a double up, and next year around 33%, equating to around $4.8 billion in revenue, which is still extremely strong. With a current market cap of $38 billion, this gives them a forward price of sales of almost eight so about two times as expensive on this metric than spotify but hey guys there must be a good reason why this is twice as expensive when we're looking at the price to sales valuation right well even though peloton is still not profitable they're losing around 71 million dollars that's what they lost last year they are a company like spotify that's focused on growth 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 their gross margins however were extremely surprising in a good way at over 45 percent this tells me that peloton has potential to be a very profitable business and if this growth on their gross margin continues then theoretically the valuations should also increase as that deserves a decent premium Peloton has a rock solid balance sheet, $1.75 billion in cash, nearly $3 billion in total assets, and that compares to around $1.3 billion in total liabilities with no long-term debt on their balance sheet. And guys, this is a very healthy margin of assets to liabilities from my perspective. Great, so Peloton looking pretty good. I have to be honest, even after this massive run-up, price of sales still looks pretty decent, growth massive, gross margins incredible. So why aren't they profitable? yet are they gonna be profitable soon let's take a look at free cash flow well if things go according to plan in the next couple of years they should be pulling in hundreds of millions of dollars in free cash flow and while this should be reinvested into the business and may not reflect on the net income it tells me that the business can sustain its growth and that strong balance sheet can remain strong or get even stronger and has a low risk of becoming compromised now here's the thing, year to date, Peloton stock is up 340%. That is quite the performance and it may be hard to justify buying in at these valuations, especially if you were someone that looked at this business before, saw it on the $20 range earlier this year and decided not to invest because choosing to invest now just because the stock price is higher is a poor investment decision. In my opinion, based on the metrics we're looking at, Peloton is a very strong company and they could have a compelling argument even at these higher prices to buy into the stock. Now, I'll admit, I have not really looked into Peloton before when they IPO'd, thought it was another hype stock, didn't really care much for it, and yeah, they missed out on some pretty good gains here. Could have bought in back then if I looked at the valuation back then, because clearly if today after this big run up, it's still looking good, back then it must have looked much, much better. So while the forward price of sales is around an eight, paying a premium for the stock, it is a high growth stock, arguments could be made either way, you know, 
it's worth it, overvalued, undervalued, fairly valued. In my opinion, I think there is still a lot more upside to see in Peloton if you are in this for the long term. If you're getting in this for the short term, one miss on the earnings report, some disappointing news, maybe lower guidance, could see the stock drop quite significantly, so keep that in mind. However, if you do believe in their business model, you know, maybe you're a customer of Peloton, you see your friends, family also using their products and their services, then you could definitely be onto something. This could definitely be a multi-bagger investment over the long term. So Peloton, Spotify, which of these two growth stocks would you personally consider at today's valuations? As you can tell, I'm probably more bullish on Peloton as it stands today. I like their fundamentals better. I like their growth prospects better. But Customer-wise, I'm a customer of Spotify, not necessarily a customer of Peloton, so I can't really speak to that aspect. Either way, any insight you guys have, please share that in the comment section down below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one.